this week uh, was very important for us. Maybe was not perfectly because we need to improve some things. But in my point of view, the most important, we are here. We are thinking in the same um, goal. Maybe this is the most important. We need to change some things, I agree. But we try to change the life of many people. Maybe this is the most important, OK? Now, <laughs> Vanessa, we will talk about the some things in this week. OK, thank you. I'm going to sit because I'm getting old and my knee hurts. <laughs> but uh, hold on. So if I can ask you, everyone, for 10, 15 minutes to close your laptop, please. It's not going to take more than 10, 15 minutes. This is a time, a quality time just between us, just for us to wrap up, although we still have more one day and a half to go, but to wrap up what was this week. Um, last night, while I was sitting in my bed in my bedroom and trying to think how to wrap up this meeting, um, I, I couldn't come with an idea because Patrick has covered pretty much everything. I think he has highlighted already the importance of capacity building and how it fits specific, specifically within the project. Mike has provided a lot of information on the methodology and how that is applied to TG. So I didn't want to be repetitive because we all sit for three days and a half work talking about and doing capacity building. So I thought I would just tell you a story. So when I joined the project, not long time ago, <laughs> I was asked to go to a meeting with our funders and basically present a little bit of the project and listen some feedback in return. So I was quite happy and thinking that um, I knew pretty much about everything and then that I, I would talk about the huge achievements we had within management and how effective it is with our PI always in front of every single issue and working really hard to try to manage people and creating uh, ways and tools to uh, register risk, for instance, to mitigate risk and to capture information and so on and so on. And then I thought, mm, I, I think that also our transdisciplinary group it is quite good. Maybe we are not um, getting the message across yet to the funder the way we would like to, but the work is there and the importance is very clear. Um, the technologies, it is clearly um, one of the most innovative, low cost and and a combined approach that is tracking every single way of innovation across the way. Innovation for what is innovation within the communities that we are working in. So that is important to highlight. So we are developing, for instance, a device that it is sending responses via cloud and getting, we, we have to reduce resources and we won't need a lab and we are reducing much more the time that the quality of information is getting to the end user and for policymakers in the future, for instance. We are treating wa water in a way that is actually suitable for the communities that are going to be using, going to be the beneficiaries. So there is no doubt that Save Water, it is an amazing project and is delivering very clear objectives with a high impact. 
And then I talk a little bit about the health and behavior side of things, how we are going beyond and we are actually measuring the quality of life and well-being in the lives of people that we are providing safe drinking water and how we are trying to work with our behavior specialists and Kantaro Azul and CTA to make sure that the end users well, the beneficiaries, uh, they actually understand the benefit of technology for their life. And I end up talking to the funder about dissemination and exploitation and how we are actually looking uh, to structure a safe water center. So this is just one step in the way. The, this four years, five million project, okay, is a lot of work, but it's just one step on the way. And we plan to do much more and to actually structure and have a center. And when I finished to talk to them, I thought, well, they're probably gonna be impressed because although there are other 29 projects funded under this call, uh, we are pretty much the only ones that are struggling every single aspect of um, the full circle of quality of life, technology, behavior change. We are the only ones doing that. So the funder actually asked me just one question, and that was, but are you delivering project management capacity building skills for your team. And I was like, yes, of, of course that is important. That is part of one of our work packets and that is a program that we are gonna be developing. But in my mind, I was thinking, as many of you I think thought this week, did they not take into consideration all the other things in the project? We are doing so much and the only thing they want to hear about is capacity building. And then finally, we came to the answer why capacity building is actually at the core of the project. Because I think, I, I even thought that Pilar sneaked into my room in the middle of the night and saw this presentation. <laughs> because you mentioned early that uh, we are all doing capacity building all the time. Capacity building is not just these training workshops, and it is always so we have the early career researchers learning from the professors and senior lecturers. We have the senior lecturers and the professors learning from other partners within the project. And then we have the management team showing the big picture. And then we have the technical team showing exactly how difficult it is. For instance, even to get a product, to get three different codes within different countries and try to find the same product. So everyone is actually practicing capacity building all the time. So that is why we need to understand the importance oops, of capacity building in the project and try to see that as a full circle of exchanging knowledge and sharing best practice. Um, so I thought actually what I would do is just to, and then again, I thought that Patrick is nicked to my room and saw my, last, my next slide, because when I joined the project, I, um, my background provides me with some experience on how to measure capacity. And that is something that at the beginning I spoke a little bit with Patrick and then recently just before coming to Brazil, I actually was uh, speaking to Mike about that and trying to put the both of them to work together. Uh, because yes, we have to be, <laughs> I know you don't want, but you will have to. <laughs> um, we have to be capturing more quality information uh, because we are doing so much, but reporting on this. So basically, that is what happened this week. We had more than 30 people trained across seven days. That is a massive number. And we actually managed to talk with key players in the Brazilian water and sanitation system. That is very difficult to get hold of because these people, they are extremely busy. 
And usually for them to dedicate even half of a morning to be with us, we need to appreciate that. So that is actually important because that ties in with the idea of us going beyond what it is, the Save Water project, and trying to work in potential partnerships for us to try to develop a more an integrated program. Um, this is just data f that it, it came very like quickly into my mind. This is going to change, of course, and it will become an uh, official report. And that report is going to go not only to our funders, but also to our advisory board in the future, to all of us because everyone needs to understand the importance and the impact that every single one of you helped us to achieve. So we already have potential partnerships. It doesn't, um, sometimes it doesn't feel because it was extremely intensive, but it was uh, also extremely productive. Uh, we have a uh, potential actually to bring safe water to Brazil. Of course that we will have to find the funding for that, but we are all very good at leveraging funding anyway. So we will find a way to do that. Um, Iniciativa Verde is actually would be our, the equivalent of Cantaro Azul or CTA um, in Brazil. And they have the capacity, for instance, to start going using what we have, the technologies that we have already, and testing in Brazil. So that is a potential. Is it still uh, the first step? Is something that we need to think of, but it's something that is real, touchable. Um, and then, of course, several opportunities to develop knowledge exchange and share best practice. Uh, Embrapa has showed actually interest in joining a program with us. And then we have USP that we are also already looking into our official memorandum of understanding to be signed between the School of Engineering here and the School of Engineering in, uh, at Auster to extend, um, we don't know yet, probably PhD students. But that is just, the, the point here is that that is just the beginning. And that is why you are all here. That's what this week is for. It's for us to be learning for each other, of course, and all of the points that Patrick and Mike made already. But it's also for us to see the potential that we have as a group to actually be uh, continue this work. So how many ideas do you think that came, uh, can, uh, came out of this week? For instance, um, there is the forum idea that Mike raised for us to be communicating more effectively. Uh, there was the, there is, even the smaller, simplest ideas, they can be ef effective for us. So the WhatsApp group that Bill mentioned yesterday that actually might facilitate the communication with Hector and everyone else. And there are other ideas that it is more long term, such as trying to establish a safe water training academy where we can bring expertise from Medellin, Cantarazu, USP, CTA, all other projects that we have partners in the UK and actually have a, a big training academy. So that is things that we need actually to sit back and appreciate as well. So we will be developing w other ways or rethink about maybe restructuring some parts of Work Packet 6 because that is a contributive workshop uh, package where everyone has to be fitting into. But we also need to appreciate what we managed to achieve. And I think the most important is actually how people feel. So I mentioned to Mike before, was to Mike, no, I actually to Patrick when I joined the project, was are we collecting qualitative data? Are we actually asking people how they feel about these trainings that we are delivering? And he said, well, but 
we have many numbers. <laughs> are numbers not important? And I say, yes, the numbers are extremely important, but, yeah, but we also need to be thinking how people react and how they feel about this. So I was just listening to many of you across the week, uh, but I think the quote that catched my attention most was someone mentioned to me, I had no idea of the complexity and the dimension of the project. And I think, to be honest, many of you, us working in the project, we don't have this idea because it is extremely, it, we can see that it, it is a complete, it's complete, it's integrated, so we can see on the positive side. So that is something that we have to be thinking of. It's actually, okay, the numbers are important, uh, we need them to be reporting to our funders, but we are people working with each other. So we need to understand how we feel as well about everything that is delivered to us. And this is actually just to, although I think everyone has an idea of the complexity that is to put a program like this together, uh, this is just some of the numbers. So we had across this week more than 50 people involved, and this is not actually people working to make it happen, it's people that participated. So it's the Save Water group, uh, is the USP students, is all our external stakeholders, uh, the visitors, um, and also additional stakeholders that we will be engaged later on in the week. Uh, we have more than 40 presentations to make sure that people had the templates, that people knew exactly what to present, that they know their, their time to present, that they are happy with they're gonna present, that they understand if it is good or not. So it is a lot of people to manage and a lot of expectations to manage as well, because it's not everyone. Sometimes we will have 10 minutes for a specific area and 30 minutes for the other one, doesn't mean that your area is as important than the one that has 30 minutes. It's just that we need to be thinking at the big picture and what is important for the whole group at that specific time. Um, we had, of course, if the program, if you don't talk about logistics, it's because the, there was someone thinking about it on your behalf. So. Well, so just for us. <laughs> so um, it was all of us, we all contributed. So I think it is important also to realize that it was 105 nights of a hotel that was booked on behalf of everyone. If we are taking into account that we stayed here seven to eight nights and we were 15 people and that we are in two different hotels. So it is all, this is just to summarize, it was of course letters and letters that was submitted by LIDA to invite, because Brazil is quite a formal bureaucratic country, so we need to be sending official letters to our external stakeholders to invite them and wait for them to accept and send to the, the, their office and send back. So, and calls and calls and emails and emails that we needed to do to make sure the program was the way everybody expected. But I think that um, what goes within all of this is that actually we had at the core of the time our strategic aims. So we were thinking this is not an annual meeting where we are going to be talking about work packets and talking about how we are going to move on from the, the place we are now to the future or exactly uh, what needs to be done. This is a training week that is to be exchanging knowledge and learning new things. So t sometimes you will feel uncomfortable because you will be stepping outside of your comfort zone, but that is also the purpose is a lesson learned personally for yourself as well. Um, and of course, we try to think, because we have limited resources and we travel just once a year to be able to deliver this combined, 
um, we need to think how to maximize our time and our resources. Then we thought about including the global network side of our program into the week in Brazil. And that's why we engaged with several um, stakeholders within the water and sanitation sector to make sure that we are thinking about the future and developing these partnerships. Um, and each day there is a different um, aim or objective that we need to achieve. So the day one, for instance, everything that we wanted was to actually, we had a reduced time because we wanted to listen from the stakeholders we invited, which was um, important universities in Brazil, Embrapa, Iniciativa Verde, and other organizations to make sure that we can spot the opportunities and go to them and say, I would like to develop a project with you. And then day two and then three was focused on us, for us to be learning from each other, interacting, sharing best practice, and et cetera. And then finally, today, it's more a balance of what we achieved throughout the week. And tomorrow, we will have a meeting at Sabesp, which uh, I think everyone knows by now, that is Sao Paulo Water Management Company. They are w one of the biggest, I would say, in Latin America, and our advisory board can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but they are doing so much uh, research and development. They have expertise in so many different areas, and there are a lot of opportunities where they can share their, um, their capacity with us, and we can share our expertise with them. And tomorrow is a completely different objective as well. So that's what we have to have in mind, that um, that was everything that needed to be taken into account for us to be this week here and join the company of each other and having some cachaças at the end of the day, but <laughs> it was because we actually managed to do our work during the day in a, in a good and um, co comprehensive way. Uh, so that is it from me. I just would like uh, to take um, two minutes to actually thank people. First of all, I would like to thank Lida and Patrick because actually this was a program that was co-designed. Lida it is hosting us brilliantly. She, everybody knows Lida's energy. <laughs> so she's on top of everything. She knows every single detail that is happening. She's always contributing. She's always proactive. And we couldn't have felt more welcome. So thank you very much. And I also would like to um, thank Patrick, because as he said, uh, his area is actually, nowadays can, can, no, no, hold on, nowadays can we still say hard science or is still, or is something like that you don't say anymore? Yeah? <laughs> and then, um, and he's actually, he's stepping as well outside of his comfort zone to try to understand the mind of every single of you and how to benefit you in a certain way with capacity building and how to collect the numbers and how to report to the funder and making sure that we have a good program put together. So that is not easy at all. And on top of that, if we, work, if we look at all the other work packages, uh, the leaders, they actually have 10, 15 percent of the time allocated allocated to dedicate to save water. Patrick has five, and all the other work package leaders they have a lot of support. Uh, they have a lot of collaborators within the work package, and Patrick is in the work package pretty much by himself with Cantaro Azul and and CTA, which is. If capacity building is at the core, why we have 5% of someone's time in addition to two organizations to be able to deliver a program that should be benefiting everyone? So maybe we have to think about it.
So thank you very much, Patrick. Did you? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, I would like to thank all of you because I know that you needed to leave your commitment for a whole week and we are all extremely busy people. Uh, some of you have sons and daughters and granddaughters and grand so it is not easy to be away from our families for a week and sometimes getting emails coming up to your inbox and then you look and you have 115 emails and you're thinking, oh my God, when I go back to the office, I need to address all of this. Um, uh, so uh, it is not easy uh, to be 100% delic dedicated and focus on what we are doing over here because we are we are humans we are thinking about the future already so I just would like to thank you for taking the time and thank the students at USP I'm not gonna name you all because I would get it so wrong but I appreciate and I recognize each of you and I know how much work you have put into this I've been speaking to Paulo to Natalia directly but I know that Gustavo and Lucas have been involved as well, Camila, Barbara, Wagner, and as I said, that I wouldn't name every single one and I just started. <laughs> uh, but I, it's just to show appreciation because you, Trilled, you were extremely, extremely dedicated and professionals. So thank Pilar and Mike and Margarita and e Hector and Catalina, Luis, and everyone within Safe Water, but also the USP students. So clap your hands for yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. And that's all. I, I have some words for this week. Um, for me, what's very, very, very nice week, I love the activities, is very nice has the uh, Safe Water team here, working in the specific areas, working for safe lives. I think it's very important. It's our uh, goal uh, for uh, in the project. Um, I hope the team um, enjoyed the, your time in São Carlos. And the, the rain was very strong sometimes. But uh, we're working for be a very, very nice week. Um, and uh, for me, it's very important to show this slide. I would like to tell thank you for my team. I want of all my team here, please, because with my group, this activity was not possible. Thank you. Many thank you. <laughs> thank you for my team. Wagner, Rafael, Natalia, Paulo, Lucas, Fernando, Bárbara, Ulisses, Liri, Camila, Milina e Gustavo. Thank you.